Kombucha. Should you be drinking it? Was it this one or this one or this one? I don't know. Hey there, I'm Neely with Neely on Nutrition, providing you with unbiased, relevant health and nutrition information, empowering you to make educated, informed decisions. In my last video, I talked about fermented food and promised a video about kombucha. What is kombucha? Kombucha is a fermented um, product originating from China thousands of years ago. It's often marketed as a probiotic and promises um, many health benefits. It's made by um, taking a tea, generally black or green tea, fermenting it with something called SCOBY, symbiotic cultures of bacteria and yeast. So it's a fermented drink, um, combination of black or green tea uh, with sugar, yeast, and bacteria. Why has kombucha become so popular over the years and why do people drink it? Well, one reason, some people really like the flavor, the taste of it, um, and others are attracted to the purported but unproven health claims. But in, in a word, it's really good marketing. Okay, that was two words. Kombucha teas are promoted to improve digestion, strengthen the immune system, claim to be detoxifying, help with diabetes, fight cancer, reduce risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, and the list goes on and on. We might be onto something when PepsiCo buys, um, buys a brand like, um, like Kavita here. By the way, I have no affiliation with any of these brands. But what are the health benefits of kombucha? Despite the claims, there's no evidence to suggest it's significant for human health at this time. Um, research with animals and in cell studies have reported benefits, um, and much of the marketing um, that's done by the manufacturers is often due to extrapolated results from these studies, but human studies are lacking. In a 2018 review of kombucha studies and the health benefits, only one study was found. And because there, because there was no control group, the results really don't mean anything. Kombucha may contain B vitamins and other compounds, and like other fermented food, may have health benefits. And furthermore, because it, it is a tea, it may have health benefits, um, but well-controlled studies on kombucha are lacking. Should you drink a kombucha? It's a decent alternative, um, not anything though to add to your diet, especially if you're generally eating healthy, but it can be a good substitute for um, um, a higher sugar like juice or a soda. Um, it usually does have added sugar, but it's typically lower in sugar um, than juice or soda. So if you're trying to cut back on added sugars in other ways, then it might be a good alternative to you. Who should not drink kombucha and are there any precautions? Well, it's not recommended for people with a poor immune function. The live organisms may negatively affect somebody's immunity. Because of the cost, anywhere from three to $4 per 16 ounce bottle or more, people may choose to make it. And um, there are plenty of YouTube videos explaining how to make it. Um, if you do choose to brew it on your own though, be cautious if you brew it. Safety is a factor and contamination may be more of an issue. Because it is a fermented product, it may have up to like half percent alcohol. So those avoiding alcohol should be cautious. Um, but some home brews actually have been shown to be higher, like two to three percent of alcohol. And when compared to like beer, which is four percent, that's pretty high. If you buy it, what should you look for? Well, just like dietary supplements and fermented foods and other functional foods, they're not all created equal. So do your due diligence when um, looking for a brand that you like. There are pasteurized versus unpasteurized or raw. Now, pasteurizing is good because it does kill the harmful microbes um, and it stops the fermentation of alcohol. So um, alcohol typically is less, but it also does kill the live cultures. So generally, if a product is pasteurized, then live cultures are added back to the product. If you do buy unpasteurized or raw, I would make sure to buy from a reputable manufacturer, one that's got um, a good reputation. And choose a taste that you like that has the lowest added sugar. Like all nutrition labels now, um, a manufacturer is required to put the total sugar as well as um, how many grams of added sugar there are. In this, for example, there are 15 grams of total sugar, um, including 12 grams of added sugar. And in this case, it's from um, cane sugar. There are four, tea, four grams um, of sugar per teaspoon. So in this case, it has three teaspoons of added sugar. 
other products may not have added sugar, but like in this case, it has um, 20 grams of total sugar, zero added sugar, but um, it's because that mango puree in this case is not considered an added sugar, when in fact it actually is sugar. So find the, the taste that you like with the lowest amount of sugar. What's the bottom line on kombucha? If you're healthy and you like it, don't mind the expense, go ahead and drink it. But it is no magical elixir, lots of suggested benefits, but very little evidence. If you wanna learn more about probiotics, make sure you watch my videos here and the playlist. And um, yeah, thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Gotta answer more on that.